I'd like to welcome um, Inland Waterways Association to make a presentation. Good afternoon. Um, IWIAI, thank you, Mr Chairman and committee members, for your invitation with respect to part two of the bill dealing with the canals and the barrow navigation. The Inland Waterways Association of Ireland, better known as IWAI, is a voluntary body with 23 branches across the island of Ireland, representing over 3,000 waterway enthusiasts. IWAI was founded in 1954 in response to plans to build low bridges over the Shannon. A successful campaign ensured this navigation could be developed into the major domestic and international tourism and recreational attraction that it is today. In the 1960s, the IWAI campaigned to prevent the Grand Canal in Dublin from being turned into sewerage infrastructure. And now, 50 years later, we are campaigning again to save the canals and barrow in terms of their navigation potential. IWAI are involved in restoration on the Boyne and Lagging navigations, the Ulster Canal, Rams Island and Loch Corrib. We have a strategic alliance project with the RNLI on Loch Ree. We hold over 200 events that foster community relationships with waterway communities each year. In 2018, we will jointly host the World Canal Conference in Athlone with Waterways Ireland. The IWAI regrettably advises that the proposed Heritage Bill, as it pertains to the canals, does not put users' requirements, local communities or tourism at the centre of the regulations. It is viewed as disproportionate and heavy-handed legislation that will enable similar onerous bylaws. An important aspect here is to understand that the canals and barrow navigation are different from other Irish waterways in two key areas. First, unlike the other navigations, there are no private mooring provisions or service providers on the canals. Waterways Ireland are a monopoly. Secondly, the canals are not wide open expanses of water offering easy and multiple navigation options. They are effectively linear waterways with issues and challenges such as low water levels, weed issues, obstructions underwater, manually operated locks, etc. Larger boats, including the traditional vessels the canals were built for, can have to travel sometimes for up to a day to find an area wide enough to turn around in. Thus, travel on the canals tend to involve lengthy tours of duty, so to speak, rather than short cruises from a home-based marina. And this travel is typically done on weekends and over a period of weeks and months. The green and silver route promoted by IWAI Dublin demonstrates this very well, promoting travel through Dublin via the Royal and Grand Canal, the Barrow and River Shannon. Although this struggles due to the fact that a bridge which blocks the navigation in Dublin is only raised a couple of times a year. That the proposals in the Heritage Bill are not compatible with the current boating practices on the canals, they are more reflective of boating practices on open waterways. So why do boaters travel the canals? The Royal and the Grand Canals and Barra Navigation waterways are a magnificent marriage of nature with engineering feats. They link the north, south, east and west of all navigations across the island, including the Shannon, the Erne, the Liffey, the Shore and the Nore, all accessible by boat through the canals and barrow. They have the potential to attract domestic and international boating visitors who will relish the tranquil opportunity of slow tourism cruising at walking pace as people have walked faster than the canal boats on the system. While experiencing the associated industrial heritage, wooded valleys, peatlands, small villages and towns that have interdependence with the canals and our capital city. There is also unfortunately the adventure in between where boaters at some locations can be targeted by antisocial behaviour or delay for hours trying to remove obstructions from the canal or the propeller on the boat. It's not all plain sailing. The main IWAI concerns, areas of concerns relate to the new complicated licensing. Rather than the simple permitting system that has operated for decades, is customer friendly, easy to use and understand and fit for purpose. Adequate provisions so that boats of dimensions for which the canals are built to accommodate are protected and can continue to use the canals into the future. Appropriate charging structures that matches the provision of service available the fixed penalty payment notices and fines with no independent appeal mechanism other than the courts that would discourage use of the canals and are not in place in any other inland waterways in Ireland. The proposed provision and powers of authorised officers. The legislation that would facilitate the introduction of a completely different set of rules, charges, regulations and fines that are not in place on the adjoining waterways. 
The result will be that canal users will simply move to these waterways, which will be a further blow to an already fragile future of navigation on the canals. In 2014, Waterways Ireland and the Navigation Authority attempted to introduce new bylaws without any pre-public consultation. IWAI and over 2,000 individuals from waterways communities and international waterways organisations responded within the 21-day consultation period, expressing huge concern. One of these concerns identified by IWAI was that the proposed bylaws lacked legal authority. This was subsequently accepted by Minister Humphreys on advice of the Attorney General. Subsequently, the canal aspect of this heritage bill was introduced in January 2016, again without any pre-consultation or any notice to the IWI or canal communities. At high-level meetings between Waterways Ireland and the IWI, it has been made clear that Waterways Ireland wished to immediately reintroduce the proposed 2014 bylaws and increase charges to the maximum level to attract private marine operators onto the canal. This approach of putting the cart before the horse will finish the canals. As due to their linear nature, they do not represent an attractive private investment opportunity compared to other more expansive waterways. Why try to force aggressive charges, excessive charges, sorry, license agreements on only one group of customers for use on a struggling piece of infrastructure, rather than improve the service, improve the product, restore confidence in the product, increase the boating using it, and entice private investment that way? We have included in our submission a copy of the proposed Waterways Ireland Annual Canal Permit Licence Agreement. This runs to nine pages, requires four different signatures, witnesses and seals of office, and is, we believe, an onerous and disproportionate burden on our citizens at a time when the political agenda is all about administrative burden reduction. This should remain a simple permit that is the equivalent of a road tax certificate. Instead, it is a complex legal document which will require boat owners to seek legal advice. Licences are not in place on any other waterway, nor in use in private marinas or local authority marinas where annual mooring is provided. IWAI are not against contributing to the canals financially. We have, over the past two years, sought to engage with Waterways Ireland regarding new permitting and charges in advance of any updating of the bylaws. IWAI offered agreement to a new increased price in structure proposed by Waterways Ireland if based on a simple permitting system without complex licences. Our offer was rejected and we were told the matter was exhausted. We still await a reply as to what protection and advantages the new and highly legalistic licence system gives Waterways Ireland compared to the traditional user-friendly permit system where one agrees to abide by published terms and conditions. You know, regardless of the size of any increase in charges to boaters, the income received by Waterways Ireland from these licences will be very, very small compared to its annual budget. We're talking approximately a quarter of 1% of their income. The canals and barrow navigation are an important part of our social infrastructure, just like the Phoenix Park, other national parks, or St Stephen's Green. None of these are expected to pay their way, Citizens and visitors avail of them freely, as do recreational users of the canals, that is except for boaters. Of the over two dozen different user groups on the canals, only the social boaters are being targeted with complicated licensing agreements and charges. IWAI accept that there are rising issues in less than a handful of places, primarily due to location, and these do need addressing. The three navigations in question total 336 kilometres. The length of waterway affected by the few areas with concerns is a couple of kilometres, less than 1%. It is important that legislation for bylaws that we be detrimental to 99% are not introduced to address issues arising in less than 1% of the waterways. The legislation should enable bylaws to vary from location to location on the canals. Some may view aspects of part two of this bill on their own as reasonable, but they impose a huge burden and risk collectively with no evidence presented as to what risk analysis has been done in relation to these proposals or why only one user group is being targeted for payment. To conclude, the canals built initially for boats today have many different users. The proposed greenways alongside will be great, but a key attraction of the canals is the boats that use them, both modern and heritage canal boats and barges. They act as a magnet to visitors who love to walk alongside, admire them and chat to the crews. Irish boaters, local communities and visitors have helped keep these navigations active and open. 
It is time now to expose and develop them for national and international tourism with appropriate promotion, management and community engagement. They can be a vibrant recreational resource for the 21st century, linking slow tourism with invaluable industrial, archaeological and environmental legacies. They can be a world-class branded waterways route, similar to the Lakes of Killarney, the Norfolk Broads, the Four Counties Ring in England and the Lakes of Canada. 61 different amendments were tabled with regard to this legislation in Seanadair and by numerous party and independent senators. This committee has before it an ideal opportunity for new partnership politics to be demonstrated by proposing an amendment for the withdrawal of the Canal Part 2 section from the Bill to facilitate the introduction of a fit-for-purpose dedicated Canal Act with proper pre-legislative consultation. Over-regulation and higher charges are not the answer to developing these waterways. They deserve proper legislation that will put user requirements, local communities and tourism at the centre of the regulations. And finally, how ironic it would be if this Heritage Bill, rather than protecting the future of the Grand and Royal Canal and Barra navigation, enables legislation for bylaws that end up creating waterways with no boats on them. IWA, thank you for listening. Uh, I might start off